Etude number 35 has many shifts and we have to establish exactly what kind, when do we use each kind and how do we add security to them. When we practice slowly, it's the best time to establish all of these technical points. Measure 1, measure 2, for example, have the kind of shift that would benefit from a usage of a guide note or guide finger. I'll practice slowly. In this case, I find my top E flat through a very soft yet audible B flat when I practice slowly. Bar number two has the same exact problem, same solution. Going on, bar number three and four has quite a few shifts and extensions, caterpillar like movements. So we have to be clear when do we shift, when do we extend, and if we shift, how do we shift. In this case, we need to use a kind of shift which is called anticipated. So I'll show it slowly. Here. Here. Here too. So what I do, I go to the next note and I hear that note slightly on, in the previous bow. So when I play it for real in the next bow, it's already there. Going on to the next uh, issue, which is in bar number 7, 8, and 9, uh, it's just a small issue of how we shift, and in this case, again, with an articulated kind of technique, so we have a clean uh, and, and uh, clear execution. Like here, for example. I go to the A flat through a quiet, yet slightly audible, and I also feel the F on the first finger. To the next challenge going on, bar 23, 24, same thing, we are going to have some big leaps and it will benefit from a guide finger type of approach. Throughout the whole etude, this will be very useful to have this guide finger. Um, again, not always, but most of the time. Next two bars have a different kind of shift, a different kind of solution. Bar 25. Finding this B natural is through an anticipative shift. I go to the B natural in the previous bow, hear it slightly, then play it for real in the next bow. Um, going on, bar number 27, 28, 29 also would benefit from anticipated shifts as we go up the D string. Here. I hear the E flat again in the previous bow slightly, and then when I change the bow, it's already there. The last challenge is near the end of the etude, starting with bar number 37 when we start to climb and then we stay in high position for a few bars and we use the fourth finger, so we have to adjust the hand angle to be a bit more square and also the bow needs to go closer to the bridge and stay there because it's possible that notes would squeak if we don't have enough pressure on the bow. thing is this harmonic. If we play the third finger by itself, as it's indicated, it will be very flat compared to the previous few notes. But if we keep the thumb behind one octave distance, we can control the intonation, in this case to be slightly higher.